Peter Moss, who wrote my book, The Underboss, wrote a story and said something once. He said, John Gotti was playing checkers while Sammy was playing chess. There's no match. Checkers is a game. This is not a game. What I was playing was not a game. Hey guys, I have this chessboard ahead in front of me here because I'm going to be talking about chess is a game, a game about chess, but it's more about life, every aspect of life, business, and I want to explain to you. So let me start off with uh, the chess board itself and the chess game. You chess players will know. If you always set up the board right to the right, so the white box, queen, king, bishops, horses, castles, and pawns. Now, the queen is uh, always on its own color. A white queen is on the white box. Black queen is on the black box. The king is right next to it. These two guys sit on both sides of it. They're bishops. Then there's horses, there's rooks, which are castles. Now, a queen can move in any which direction, forward and back, sideways, all different ways. The king could only move one spot at a time. The bishop goes on its own color and diagonally on the angle. The horse goes, it's the only piece that could jump over pieces, so it could go one, two, three. It lands outside. So I'm not going to get too in-depth with the game itself, but the object of the game is this team is going to come down and checkmate this team, the king. Now, checkmate is means that if there was a bishop here, that bishop could kill the king. That's a check. So the object of the game is to check mate someone that he's dead. He can't get out of the way. There's nothing that could block him. So a check would be checkmate, game over. The king is dead. Now, there's a lot of books on this game, and you can take the books, read them, there's a lot of people who know how to play this game. It's really not a game. They invented this game hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And they use this because there's a lot of strategy involved. When someone makes a move, let's say I move the pawn two steps up. He can move one or he can move two. So he moves there. Right away, the other side is thinking two and three moves ahead. Here's what they're thinking. He's going to try and kill my king. So I'm going to analyze his every move. Why he made that move. What is he trying to set up that would kill my king? Now, that strategy, <clears throat> you have to think two and three moves ahead in this game all the time. And you have to think, what is your opponent thinking? Why did he move this piece? Why did he do this? Why did he do that? So you have to get into that person's head and try to figure out what he's thinking. This is why this game goes to colleges and universities across the world. Because this teaches you strategy. When you could understand this game, and you start thinking two or three moves ahead, well, if you're thinking four moves ahead, then you're a, a chess genius. Now, how does this relate 
to your personal life, business, and everything that's involved. When you go into business, things happen. Conversations go on and people talk about what they're going to do, what they're going to charge you, what percentage they're going to give you, all of these things. Now, I'll give you an example. There's a company. This company now is looking at, they're in New York. They're looking at land in Montana. So some of the employees or people who work with them are saying, why are they looking at land in Montana? They're trying to figure out what the guy is thinking. Is he, is he thinking about moving this company to Montana that would hurt their business or help their business? So they want to think, what is he thinking? This game teaches you that. Strategies. What are people thinking? When people say something to you and talk to you, it involves this game because words always mean something. When somebody says something, um, the tone of their voice, things that they say, it means something to you. So right away, you want to get into this guy's head. Is he mad? Is he sad? Or a husband and a wife, they communicate. A lot of times they can't communicate. But this game helps them communicate. It makes them understand what the other person is thinking, what makes them happy or sad or mad. Because you, the words that you're paying attention to, you're thinking about them. Maybe their expression said something to you. So now you're analyzing this person, whether it's your husband or your wife or your kids, what school they're going to go to, how they're thinking, what they're thinking about. Maybe you shouldn't put them in certain colleges or certain schools. This is the most unbelievable game. I don't know if they made it that way. I know it's a game of strategy. And I know colleges and universities took this over a long time ago. Now, in the mafia, I use this game. I got to know this game and understand the game. And when I was talking to people in other families or sit down a meeting, I always strategize, what is he thinking when he comes to this meeting? What is he like? How can I satisfy him and satisfy myself at the same time? So this game gave me the ability to look at someone and analyze what he's thinking. Now, in the Mafia, this is extremely important because when you talk about killing the king, they might be thinking about killing you. So strategizing on their thinking, what they're thinking about, why they're thinking these things is extremely important. And I think chess has helped me in life, whether it was in the Mafia and uh, in business, in relationships with women, my wife, my children. What people say to me is very important. Their words are important. Paul Castellano once said, when you take a gun out and you point it at someone and pull the trigger, you can't stop that bullet. It goes to its target and does damage. You can't stop the bullet once you pull the trigger. Words have the same effect. When someone says something to you, you can't grab that word back in midair. You can't stop it. Like the bullet, it goes right to the person. And it may do damage. Not damage where they'll die, but psychological damage. When you learn this game, you learn to sit back and watch your moves. 
the, ch the game of chess of life, you watch your words, what you're saying. It's going to mean something to someone. It's going to mean something in the relationship that you have. It's a tremendous game. And it's a game of strategy, thinking, analyzing, watching your moves. Someone makes a move. You don't just make a move. Boom, right away. You analyze what they're thinking. You analyze the situation. You analyze what move you're going to make to try and win this game. So you're going to make a rush move. So you don't make these rush, de rough de uh, rush decisions in your life. You analyze. Listen to the words. Listen to the conversations. And play this game. It's the game of chess, but it's the game of life. Relationships. Business. Use this game. That's why they teach this in colleges and universities. They want to make these kids think. Use their brain. Once you play this game enough, you'll understand the benefits of strategy, thinking, all of that stuff. Now, I always wondered growing up, I learned it as a kid. My older brother-in-law showed me the game. I played it for a while. I played it when I was in prison, and uh, it helped me strategize everything in my life. I think I owe it to this game. It's not a game. A game is monopoly, checkers. You could do a lot of things. When I had trouble with John Gotti in prison, And I said this many times, and I think a lot of people know the story. The FBI knows the story. He was looking to dump the case in my lap. I would do the time for him to go free. The problem is, I saw what he was doing, almost like a chess game. Peter Moss, who wrote my book, The Underboss, wrote a story and said something once. He said, John Gotti was playing checkers while Sammy was playing chess. There's no match. Checkers is a game. This is not a game. What I was playing was not a game. It was strategy. Moves. Seeing what he was doing, exactly what he was doing, why he was going to do it. Not only did I see it, I started to analyze he was going to come to kill me. I was the king. So now I was analyzing this game. I saw his moves. They were loud and clear. So my game now became, how do I kill him? How do I checkmate him? When he finally told me that I would be going to prison, I would take the weight and all this crap. I don't really want to get too deep into it. But uh, I said, is that what you want to do? I already knew he wanted to do that. He said yes. <clears throat> I said, okay, let's do it. On my way out, I said, check me. My checkmate was, adios, motherfucker. I'm switching sides and I'm going with the government. You stay here and uh, you'll see what that word checkmate means. So I was playing chess while John was playing checkers. I think Peter Moss was right. He got checkmated. And uh, I owe it to this game to analyze things, analyze life. I think this could save a lot of marriages. People understand one another better. Um, and uh, hopefully it could save marriages. Maybe it'll break them up sooner.
Maybe you'll see you won't make that mistake and be married. You could analyze what a person is way before you say, I do, and understand what's going to happen. So uh, I'm starting to sound like a marriage counselor, but I'm talking about this game. It's a great, great game. It's a mind game. It's not a game. It's developing your mind to an extreme on analyzing so many things. I have an eighth grade education. I didn't go to college, universities, but uh, I did play chess. I did play chess. And I played chess with a lot of guys who graduated a lot of big colleges and universities. And uh, one time I wanted to play my wife's uncle, who's a banking executive. And on a holiday, we went there and I saw a chess board and I said, oh, you play chess? Oh, yeah. So I said, maybe we could play again. It was a joke. I was going to play Uncle Joe on a chess board. This guy's brilliant. All kinds of colleges, all kinds of degrees. He's the head banking exec. So I said, I'll probably lose, but I, let's just play it. Just kidding around. I beat him two games. He wanted to commit suicide, I think. He was embarrassed. They will all stop laughing while I was laughing, especially when I said checkmate. So uh, it is a great game. If you ever want to play it, play it. Somebody got in touch with me just recently and said, Sammy, I know you play chess. I could develop a chess game that's on computers or whatever and have the different families and you as the Don and the other side and the two families are fighting. I said, I never, I never thought of that. It sounds very, very interesting. I, I don't know, but I would love to talk to you about it. And, uh, and I'm actually thinking about it because when you play this game, you get stuck on this game playing. And after a while you say, well, I'm tired. I don't even want to play no more. But you're going to realize that this, how many benefits this game gives you. This is a degree. I wish that in colleges and universities, they said he graduated with honors, English, math, history. And uh, he has two, three years of a degree of playing chess. Now, if they ever did that, that's the guy I want to hire. I want this guy to work for me. And uh, I know he's going to be great. So that's my chess story. And it's a, chess, a story of life. And all you guys who do play chess out there and women who play chess out there, I know you're going to love this because you know it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, so at this point, I think I'm going to give my normal goodbye to a lot of you uh, Spanish-speaking people. Adios, motherfuckers.